welcome back students to one more session of your practical analysis hope you would have seen the earlier videos so in the earlier videos what did we what did we do let us recall once again so i started with the salt analysis topic as on the request of most of the students so i thought i'll first pick up the salt analysis in salt analysis i have taught you what are the preliminary tests so as soon as you get your salt you have to do preliminary test with which you will come to at least an idea of what anion or cation is given. So what is the first preliminary test? We will be doing the physical examination of the test. What is that? You will be observing whether the salt is amorphous or crystalline. After that you will be observing the color of that salt. After that you will be observing the odor. After doing the physical examination of the salt, you will be directly doing the next important preliminary test that is dry heating test. In the previous video, I have explained you what is a dry heating test, what are the different colors of the particular anions which you get in cations also. Then after that, after dry heating test, I have also explained you what is meant by who, how do you do flame test. Then after flame test, I have explained you borax B test. After that, I have explained you charcoal cavity test and I have also explained you cobalt nitrate test after doing all this preliminary tests you will be getting an idea okay this particular anion or this particular cation may be present in the salt it is not confirmation it is only analysis after that you will jump into the next topic that is identification of anions basically anions are also called as acidic radicals cations are also called as basic radicals so anions are acidic radicals done so here in I said identification of anions. I said it is step two. Let us put this as step two. When in your when your salt is given to you, your teacher may ask you like this also. Don't get confused. Aim. What is that? You are supposed to identify one acidic radical and one basic radical from the given salt. So acidic radical means nothing. You are supposed to identify the anions. Basic radicals means you are supposed to identify the cations. Done. Acidic radicals are again divided into three categories. Okay, <clears throat> what is uh, what are these? We'll see. These categories will help you in analyzing or you know in ruling out remaining anions easily. You can take that, go with the group, and do the confirmatory tests. So it's only two step away. Uh, Let's see. First category is class one acidic radicals. Second category is class two acidic radicals. Third category is class 3 acidic radicals. Under class 1 acidic radicals, okay, what are these acidic radicals? Means these radicals are going to only respond to dilute sulfuric acid or dilute HCl. Remember, that means what am I trying to explain? These class 1 acidic radicals will only dissolve in dilute sulfuric acid or they will dissolve in dilute HCl only. Class 2 acidic radicals will dissolve in concentrated sulfuric acid or concentrated HCl. Class 3 acidic radicals, they have specific tests which are different for each and every anion. We will see all those. So, when I have to speak about class 1 acidic radicals, so I said they will only dissolve in dilute sulfuric acid, dilute HCl. What are the anions which dissolved in dilute sulfuric acid? Those are carbonate anion, sulfide anion, sulfite anion, nitrite anion, acetate anion okay let us write the names this is carbonate anion this is sulfide ide anion this is sulfite ite anion this is nitrite ite anion this is acetate anion okay done fine now second class two acidic radicals are what Class 2 acidic radicals include chloride. Let us write that chloride anion means if these are anions are present, they will dissolve in concentrated sulfuric acid. Next category is bromide anion. Next category is iodide anion. Next category, this is nitrite, this is nitrate. It is NO3 minus nitrate anion okay right <clears throat> next one next category is 
oxalate oxalate anion okay oxalate anion oxalate under class 3 acidic radicals we have sulfate anion we have phosphate anion we have borate anion we have fluoride anion done so these are the things Mom, what is the use of this let me see so i said as soon as you get the test, uh, salt try to divide into three different test tubes first initially in the first test tube add a pinch of salt and add which one dilute sulfuric acid or dilute hcl group one in the second test tube again add your salt and add concentrated sulfuric acid or concentrated hcl in the third test tube add salt and just wait i'll tell you in the first test tube when you add dilute sulfuric acid or dilute hcl if the salt dissolves so if the salt dissolves that means any of these anions are present in the salt remember that so you've ruled out all this now you're clear once again if the salt dissolves in dilute sulfuric acid or dilute hcl carbonate sulfide sulfide nitrite and acetate may be present means you can directly if i have to say may be present you can directly jump to the confirmatory test also you'll get i'll tell you what to do with that in the second test tube when you are adding concentrated sulfuric acid and concentrated hcl if any of these are present they will 100 percent dissolve in concentrated sulfuric acid so you can get an idea take out this take out this only these are present and you can go for the confirmatory test in the third test tube even if you add dilute sulfuric acid or dilute hcl or concentrated sulfuric acid or concentrated hcl the salt will not dissolve it will not dissolve it will not respond then 100 percent sure the salt may contain sulfate phosphate borate and fluoride anions then you can jump to the confirmatory test so this is how your step identification of anions will be ruled out so the ions please remember the ions which respond to dilute sulfuric acid or dilute hcl the ions which respond to concentrated sulfuric acid or concentrated hcl the ions which respond to specific tests which we will be doing very soon